addressing climate change might be the largest hurdle the world has faced in generations. As a part of the Paris Climate Agreement, Canada has agreed to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions to 30% below 2005 levels by 2030. There are many views as to how, and even if, Canada should meet its Paris target. With Canada contributing only 1.6% of total global emissions, there are those that argue without action by either the US or China, Canada's efforts will amount to little more than a self-inflicted economic wound. However, to combat climate change, all actors will have to pitch in to make meaningful change, regardless of the scale of their contribution. In the full cycle of greenhouse gas emissions, 74% comes from end-user combustion. The most impactful way to curb emissions is to curb the final consumption of fossil fuels. Government policies such as carbon taxes, at their most basic level, are policies which encourage individuals to consume less. To combat climate change, our consumption behaviour globally, domestically, and personally will need to change. Every day we face a series of small lifestyle choices which can be more or less carbon intensive. How we get around, what we eat for dinner, where we go on vacation, what we do for fun, what we purchase, where we purchase, and even what we do with those purchases. It's easy to think that our own individual choices have no effect. But with 35 million people living in Canada who make dozens of choices every day, the numbers really start to add up. There are those that argue that this requires shutting down the Canadian oil and gas industry to meet our Paris Agreement targets. However, without altering our lifestyles, both the Canadian and global consumption of oil will remain the same. The crux of the problem is that oil is a zero-sum commodity, meaning that if one country ceases to produce oil, another country will increase its own production to meet global demand. Say a traveler boards a flight for a vacation. The airplane doesn't care which country the fuel comes from, it's agnostic to supply. If Canada doesn't produce, refine, or transport the airplane's jet fuel, Canada's emissions will decrease. However, the plane still needs fuel. Another country will have to increase their own production to meet that flight's demand, thereby increasing that country's emissions. The global balance of greenhouse gas emissions remains the same. Shifting sources of oil only serve to shift emissions from one country to another. Many advocate for Canada to shut down its oil industry for being a high emissions producer, yet greenhouse gas emissions from different oil sources are fairly consistent. The average barrel of oil from the Canadian oil sands emits only 6% more CO2 than the average barrel consumed in the US. With such minor differences from source to source, the only way to meaningfully remove emissions from the system is for us, the consumer, to reduce our own consumption. In the end, Learning which of our own personal choices have the largest climate impact empowers us all to be the change we want to see in the world. Do you know what your carbon footprint is?